um, in a Twitter post is, he said, LMAO, lock my ass off. So then explain to me how I lost 100 pounds of fat, reversed my type 2 diabetes, lowered my blood pressure, and lowered my LDLC, all while eating high carb. So it wasn't Andy. It was, it was somebody that was responding to Andy's post. Okay. So, so Andy actually has been posting some really good stuff. But then okay. this, this troll got on there and, and posted this stuff. And it was just, it's such bullshit. I, would, I just was looking for a more measured response right. than, so than what I would have come my, Here's my response to that. My response is this. So this person said that they lost 100 pounds of fat, reversed their type 2 diabetes, lowered their blood pressure, lowered their LDLC, all while eating a high carbohydrate diet. And they even ate, ate small amounts of sugar. Um, so that was what they did and they lost a hundred pounds, but then the comment was, you know, nothing. So please stop talking about things you clearly know nothing about. Right. And you know, my first response is this number one, we're all struggling with the same thing. And I really, really want to congratulate that person for an amazing achievement. Even people on a ketogenic diet still struggle to lose a hundred pounds. So if you've done that and you, and as a byproduct of that, you've improved your health, absolutely phenomenal well done however there's a contextual issue that i don't think this person grasps and it's not that they're wrong i just want to explain something to them what they've done is they've gone on a caloric restricted diet the only way you can lose weight is through some formula of caloric restriction and that can be anywhere from a keto diet to a cookie diet to a cabbage diet to weight watchers there's any formula of Caloric restriction will cause you to lose weight. And when you restrict your calories, just by virtue of eating less and eating less often, in order to lose 100 pounds, that's a sustained decrease in eating. And of course, your health indices are going to get better because the health indices are related to the quantity and frequency of carbohydrate consumption. And in order to lose that kind of weight, you have to reduce your global, your total caloric, restrict, your caloric consumption over a period of time, including carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. So the issue is not that he was able to lose the weight. I think that's phenomenal. A lot of people don't have that kind of willpower. However, the real issue is, why did you gain 100 pounds of extra fat? Why did you become diabetic? Why did you become hypertensive? Why did your LDLC go through the roof? And that was exclusively because of chronic excessive carbohydrate consumption. It is impossible. The human body will not allow you to gain that kind of weight when you're eating fat and protein. It's as ludicrous as saying that water makes you drunk. It doesn't. The human body tightly controls water and the human body tightly controls our consumption of nutrients. And the two major nutrients when it comes to calories are fat primarily and potentially secondarily protein. And we'll discuss that in a little bit. So the issue is not that he was able to, to fix this. There are a gazillion ways to fix obesity through any formula of caloric reduction. And as a byproduct, your health indices will improve. But why did you become fat in the first place? And that's what people don't understand. That's the whole issue with SECO. Caloric restriction is required to lose weight, period. However, caloric consumption did not cause the problem in the first place. And that's the dichotomy. It's purely carbohydrates that causes the problem. And the reason in the low carb, high fat, diet is we want to reconnect people with the biologic feedback. And we're going to talk about this in this section, the biologic feedback principles that the human body uses to subconsciously control our, our consumption of food and water. That is not something that you have to intentionally control. It is controlled from within. No differently than our breathing is controlled without even thinking about it. There are feedback patterns. So if you try to hold your breath at some point, you won't be able to hold your breath anymore. That's feedback. And exactly the same, same thing happens when it comes to eating real food. The problem is when you eat stuff that does not have a recognizable feedback pattern, you can do it to excess. And that includes alcohol and it includes carbohydrates. So I, I love what this guy's done. He's done a great job of improving himself. Congratulations. But keep an open mind not about what you've done to lower the weight, but what caused it in the first place. And what we're discussing is really cause and helping people to understand that cause. The risk that this person faces 
is while they've corrected the problem, the sustainability comes from changing why they gained the weight in the first place. Right. Otherwise, because if they don't do that, they're just going to put it all back on again. Exactly right. So, so I, I'm not at odds with this person, but they're looking at the, at the removal. I'm looking at the cause. Mm-hmm. So it's a slightly different perspective. Okay. Um, and, and the strategy that we use is to really address both the cause and the consequence in one go.